Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Terry Scott. I'm the program director for the MedEx program, and I'd like to welcome you to the MedEx graduation. Uh, would you please join me in standing and welcoming MedEx Seattle Class 50? Again, I want to welcome you all to the uh, graduation ceremony for Seattle Class 50. Um, congratulations to the graduates. Graduation is a big day for everyone. Um, and for this group of graduates, it's a special day because this is MedEx Class 50, the 50th class to graduate from the program. And that's a big deal for this program. Uh, it means that you've, you're graduated from a, from a well-established PA program. I want to recognize the graduates for the work and effort that they have put forward uh, to uh, meet this goal of becoming a physician assistant. I also want to take a moment and recognize that nothing of this significance is done alone. It's done in conjunction with the support of family and friends and others. So I also pause and acknowledge those, and I ask the graduates to pause and stand, if you will, turn to the audience and acknowledge those in the audience who have supported you in this journey. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys. So again, nothing of this significance is done alone. So I congratulate you all and congratulate those who have supported you and endured all the hardships, the struggles, the challenges to, to get to this day. So I'm just gonna make a few brief remarks and then I'm gonna introduce, uh, uh, talk quickly about what to expect from the ceremony this morning and then we'll get started. So as you guys, um, get ready to embark on your career, I'd like to take you back about 22, just over two years ago, when you all were uh, actually interviewing uh, to be part of this program. You remember that day? You guys made us, you guys made commitments to us about wanting to serve in medicine, to serve, uh, some of you in particular want to serve underserved populations, others want to go into specialty care, et cetera. We are looking forward to seeing you do any and all of that. I want to leave you with a few words that say uh, the world is in dire need of your services. They're also in dire need of your leadership. So as you get ready to embark on your career, I hope that you also remember that you're not just a clinician that's going to be out there and, and serving uh, needy populations, whatever that may be and however that, that might look, but you're also going to be leaders in your community. And I hope that you 
don't shy away from that opportunity to lead. Because we know that right now, our world and our nation is in dire need of individuals who care, who care deeply about others, and who are here to unite as opposed to divide. So I hope that as you get ready to embark on your career and you have a wonderful career ahead of you, because being a physician assist assistant is life changing. Uh, hopefully, you won't have to worry about economics for the rest of your life because you're going to make pretty good money. <laughs> but more importantly, you're going to be opportunities to influence the lives of your patients, influence the lives of your community, and that's an honor and a privilege. So I uh, congratulate you all and look forward to seeing how your careers unfold. So let me quickly review our agenda for this morning. Uh, so, I should start by saying to the folks in the audience that while this is a formal ceremony, MedEx, you know, we're all in garb and whatnot, we do pride ourselves in somewhat of an informal process as well. So, if you, when your graduate comes across the stage to receive their certificate and their hooding for their diploma, if you, you know, don't feel the need to stay glued to your seat, if you want to get down here and get right up there and take a picture of your graduate, please do so, because we know the significance of this, of this event. So, just, so we're going to hear, the agenda is going to go somewhat like this. We're going to hear some um, remarks from some dignitaries. We've got a keynote speaker. We've got, we're going to hear from some of the student leaders. Um, and then we're going to present some awards. And some of the, the awards were decided by the faculty and will be surprises to uh, the individuals and the uh, graduating class. We're going to then move to awarding the certificates. And then we're going to have some closing remarks. Throughout all this, we also want to say that this uh, MedEx graduates graduate in a cohort. You started a cohort, and you're going to graduate as a cohort, so this is cohort number 50. So we would like to get one last photo of you all before you are spread to the four winds. So please, as this ceremony comes to a conclusion, we want to make sure we get you up on stage and get those uh, photos. Um, and so that's what you can expect for, for today. So MedEx is a significant part of the University of Washington School of Medicine. And bringing greetings from the School of Medicine is Dr. Paul James. Dr. James is a professor and chair of the Department of Family Medicine. He attended the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, where he received his baccalaureate and medical degrees. He completed his family medicine residency training at the University of Virginia in Charlottesville, Virginia. Uh, and he's, uh, in 2001, Dr. James was recruited to Iowa as the first Iowa Academy of Family Physicians Endowed Chair in Rural Medicine and founded the Iowa Research Network in 2005, he became chairman and executive officer of the department, and in 2010, was named a Donald J. and Anna M. Odley Endowed Chair of Family Medicine in, uh, at the University of Iowa. Dr. James has brought expertise to the Department of Family Medicine in several areas, including rural medicine, ambulatory medical education, practice-based research, and measurement of healthcare quality for patients with cardiovascular diseases and team-based care. We're very honored to have Dr. James uh, here today, so please welcome Dr. Paul James. I don't know who that guy was he was talking about. Um, <laughs> No, it, it is my distinct honor and privilege to represent the University of Washington, first of all, the School of Medicine at the University of Washington, and the Department of Family Medicine in welcoming you here to this graduation ceremony for our graduates of MedEx. We are very proud of them. And, and so first, uh, a welcome and thank you to the family and friends of our graduates, the, without whom this day would not be possible. And so I will echo uh, Terry's um, thanks to you, as well as the graduates' thanks to you. Um, a special thanks to our faculty and, and preceptors that we may have here today, because again, without you, uh, this day uh, does not happen. Um, the, um, the other um, thank you or recognition that I want to talk about today are the people that we're really here for. And, and while today's graduation is about you, it's really about someone else, someone that you have yet to meet, someone whose life 
is being lived at this moment and for whom your life will intersect. And they're living their story, but yet you're going to become part of it because they're going to call upon you. And they're going to call upon you with the knowledge and experience and the skills that you've learned here at MedX. And they're going to ask you for help, for healing. And so I wanted to spend a little time today thinking about what it takes to be a healer because you've joined those ranks and those people that are out there that Terry mentioned, they're waiting for you. And when that time comes, I want you to be sure that you've, you've remembered all the things we've taught you. And then one little special ingredient today. So Terry mentioned um, a lot of my academic accomplishments, but I was first a rural family doctor. Uh, practicing actually in the clinic that I was born in. That's really going back to your roots. <laughs> and, um, and I had begun practice, and I'm going to tell you this story because in some sense you can hear about all those accomplishments that Terry talked about. And you can think, ah, oh, Dr. James, he's one of those people up there. But I'm telling you this story to say I'm just like you, in that all of us have our best days. And I'm going to say to you today is one of those best days. It's where we get to celebrate and we say, yes, we've accomplished a lot. But in the everyday world that we live, the world that we're in with our families and with our friends, we know that we don't have our best days. So, one of the things I'm going to encourage you is to think about, as you're working, are you being your best self? Because there are things that make us not our best selves when we get worried about, ah, oh, am I going to make it to the show tonight on time because this patient is more complicated than I thought? Or I'm going to be late for dinner or I'm going to be late for the kids. And we have all these pressures coming at us all the time, which is why we need teams. So healthcare in America today is about teamwork. And the PA profession was uniquely built to create high-functioning teams. It's not about how smart you are. It's not even about how caring and hardworking you are. It's how you do those things in the context of the team you're in. And the PA profession is, is uniquely qualified for that. So, so getting back to my story about being in practice, my very first day of practice in this clinic, I had the joy of working with two PAs, both Vietnam veterans, both highly experienced. and and really taught me a lot during those years. Um, but during those early years, I also learned to work too hard, not find balance in my life, and sometimes just be worn out. And there was an evening, it was a Friday night, and it had been a long, long week of clinical practice, and Friday night, in November was usually a football night at your local high school. And I was the team doctor. And I thought about it, I thought, huh, it's raining. The team's not that good this year. <laughs> Watch. Um, but I was the team doctor and maybe I should go. And then my brother called me, my older brother, who's a farmer in the community. And he called me up and he said, Paul, let's go. I'm going to stop by and pick you up. Oh, I don't really want to go. This is me not being my best self. And I got in the car with him, and it was a rainy, cold, cold night. And it was dark. And the high school is about four miles from my little town. 
and maybe two miles into the journey, we look up and there are lights flashing for fire trucks and rescue squad. And there's clearly a motor vehicle accident in front of us. My brother, who's a farmer in the community, like everyone in the community, is a member of the volunteer fire department. And he says, oh, let's go. And I'm sitting there thinking, oh, I don't want to do this. I'm Oh, you know, the, the, there are EMTs trained and they're doing their work and the last thing they want is a know-it-all doctor there. That's, that's what I told myself to comfort my own insecurities. And, and so I contemplated that for a moment until then I saw the highway patrolman come back to his car and radio and I stepped out and I just tried to inquire whether there was anything he thought I could do and he just stopped immediately and said oh Dr. James yes we need your help this young man just pulled out into the highway he lives right there in that house and a drunk driver hit him head on um, they can't get him out of the car can you please see what you can do so that's, that's the way that story began. And then I will say probably one of the most difficult things or emotional experiences happened to me as I stepped from the darkness into the bright lights of that motor vehicle accident and everything got quiet and the only thing I heard was someone saying to the mother, everything's going to be okay now. Dr. James is here. You thought your tests were, were pressure packed? Yeah, yeah, that's a pretty high bar to, to overcome. And, and I, I remember thinking, why are people saying those things? That may not be true. I don't know that I can do all this. Just like you may not know that you have the skills and the knowledge to do that. But sometimes we work together as a team. And, and so the only thing I knew was, let's go back to the basics, all the things you know. We're going to check airway, breathing, our ABCs, circulation. I was pleased that he, the young man responded. He was conscious. The EMT was really struggling with the IV. And I think he was just nervous. And all I did was pull the skin tautly so that, oh, and then the ivy just went in beautifully. And he smiled at me, the EMT technician. <laughs> <laughs> and, and miraculously then, within three minutes, the jaws of life freed the young man, and, and we were able to to get him on his way to the hospital. He, he did well um, after a, a lot of, of rehabilitation. And, and, but what bothered me was as I went through the town, everyone talked about the young doctor that saved the man's life. And I, I thought, what did I really do? I, the only physical thing I did was pull someone's skin tautly. <laughs> Impressive, I know. <laughs> um, but the purpose of my telling you this story, though, um, is first of all, I'm still in my, my bad mindset of being my worst self, not owning the job of being the healer. And my encouragement to you is to be your best self and to understand then what that young man's mother taught me when one day I tried to explain to her that it wasn't me that saved her son. That I tried to say it was him, I tried to say it was the team, and she said, Dr. James, you don't know. What does the doctor not know about? Well, she said, you don't know about hope, do you? I said, well, I thought I knew about hope. It's a pretty simple concept. And she said, well, 
doesn't sound like you do because you're talking to me about, oh, it was just chance that this happened and this happened and that that happened and he was just fortunate that, but my husband and I, we prayed for a chance that he would have a chance. And did you know that we were all in despair because nothing was going right for our son? But really, the moment you got there, things changed. And that change was the hope of the whole team, that things that didn't work before suddenly do work. And that's persistence, but it's this positive attitude. And it's the hope you bring in to any given situation that changes everything. And it's your role to be that source of hope, not just for the, your patients, but for the other members of the healthcare team, because I've already demonstrated that the doctor can be that way, and the nurses can be that way. And sometimes we'll talk about patients and we'll not be in the place where we're being our best selves. So my encouragement to you as you begin to meet these people who are out there waiting to meet you, is to find ways to be your best self and to harness the healing power of hope. And so there are a few ways that I guess I'd like to encourage you to do that. Um, I mentioned how I was not my best self, and, and the way we are not at our best selves is when we overwork and we're tired, if we're not dealing with anger, if we're not being nurtured by those who love us and those whom we love. Just nurturing, finding nurturing relationships in your own life with your family is going to help you be that healing hope that others are going to need. Because when you haven't nurtured and been nurtured by your family and your friends, you become less than your best self. And so while doing the work of being a physician's assistant is really important, attend to that other part because that's where ultimately much of your sources of hope will come from. So while I've alluded to the fact that, that, that your being here today is not about you, today really is about celebrating your accomplishments, the hard work. Oh, can you even imagine how long you had to sit there and study and study? It, it, uh, I'm sorry, there's some PTSD coming up right now <laughs> among this group. Um, I, I just want to share then my heartfelt congratulations for a job well, well done. And, uh, and, and to say that you deserve the honor that you're going to be bestowed today. And I just want to encourage you to then give your patients the hope, give your teams the hope, and nurture that hope and love with those that you cherish and with family and friends. Um, enjoy the rest of your day. Good morning, I'm Christine Kempe. I'm a Seattle didactic faculty, and it is my pleasure today to introduce the class president for Seattle Class 50. Uh, Michael Doyle was unanimously elected by his classmates in the fall of 2016 as president of their class student society. Over the past two years, he's worked with the members of the student government to provide support and leadership to the class. Prior to PA school, he was a medical laboratory scientist. After graduating, he looks forward to working in hospital medicine. Please join me in welcoming Michael Doyle. Hello, everyone. So I wanted to take a moment to congratulate my classmates on this accomplishment. It's been a long 28 months, and I'm really proud of all of you guys, and I'm glad I could share this journey with you.
And just like everybody else, I want to thank our family and friends for supporting us on this journey because sometimes it's harder on them than it is on us. And it's my honor and privilege to introduce two people who were nominated to give our graduation speeches. Up first is Rachel Robbins, and then Terry Dubervac will be speaking. Thank you. Observing the crowd for habitus, posture, level of comfort, <laughs> signs of distress, and affect. That's an inside class joke. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Rachel, and I'm very honored to speak on behalf of the fabulous Medics Lab 50. Um, first, I'd like to thank the faculty and admissions committee for doing such a good job at picking me, I mean, this class. <laughs> um, UW has assembled an incredible motley crew of brilliant, hardworking and compassionate people from a really wide variety of backgrounds. Um, April Riverland, Sarah Bowman, Rob McCrory, and Mel Sibley are paramedics who were already experts at completely destroying a perfectly good outfit with a pair of scissors before they joined the program. <laughs> Doug Stroop was a, sex a very successful male model. <laughs> and Matt Arbuckle was a slightly less successful male model. <laughs> to page three of a medical supply catechog, wearing a straight jacket. <laughs> Josh Swidler and Chris Petrie are so well-dressed that Nordstrom's hired them to stand in the display window. And Jen Kassler got paid to stare at people in their sleep. She's a sleep tech. Um, and of course, Paul Hughes is a pharmacist. I could go on and list every incredible individual, but we'd be here all day, and some of these people know where I live. So, um, anyway, as I reflect on the last two years of PA school, I can't help but notice how our experiences kind of perfectly mirror the film trajectory of cinematic legend and bodybuilding genius Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> you knew that was coming. So, Family Medicine was the comedy Kindergarten Cop. For those of you who haven't seen it, it's about who, a cop who has to moonlight as a kindergarten teacher, and chaos ensues. I think many of us have struggled with the role transition to physician assistant, um, much the same way that Arnold's character, Detective John Kimball, struggled. He went on an undercover mission to serve and protect, but with a previous set of skills that he didn't necessarily know how to apply to a group of people who were not always receptive to him. Does this sound familiar to anyone? Um, Anyway, there's this one scene where he's chasing after these kids, saying, take your toys back to the carpet, back to the carpet. And if you replace the word toys with pap smears and urine samples, and the word carpet with lab, that's basically a typical day in family medicine. <laughs> so, behavioral medicine was the movie Hercules in New York. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, you're not alone. This is a film that not as many people recognize or even like, even though it laid the foundation for the rest of his career. Kind of like how mental health is often minimized, despite being the foundation for each and every person's overall well-being. General Surgery was the movie Total Recall. That is, totally trying to recall the answers to anatomy questions fired off by surgical residents. And here's a tip, when in doubt, the answer is the long thoracic nerve. <laughs> Internal Medicine was the alien thriller Predator, because it scared me a lot. <laughs> Emergency Medicine was the movie True Lies. And I don't think that one re really requires an explanation. <laughs> and honestly, how many times have we muttered to our preceptors, I'll be back, as we return to an exam room to ask a, pa a patient a vital question that we forgot during the history and physical? <laughs> Wheezy Greenwood was able to say, hasta la vista, baby, to the infants she helped deliver during an obstetric rotation. I even had the honor of telling a patient, it's not a tumor, when I diagnosed them with a baker's cyst. <laughs> and let's be honest, how many of us haven't said under our breath, come to your follow-up appointment if you want to live? <laughs> 
So, when I first sat down to write the speech last night at like 7 p.m., uh, yeah. diamonds are made under pressure, you guys. Um, I opened up the Wikipedia page for an Arnold Schwarzenegger so I could see the full list of his film and characters, and I noticed something kind of interesting. The further down you read on his filmography, the more often he's listed as playing himself rather than a fictional character. And I hope that after we go out into the world to practice as PAs, that will be true for us too. Having such a huge degree of responsibility to our patients and communities is really daunting, and many of us still feel like we're playing a role and pretending to be good enough. But I have faith that each of us is gonna feel the distinction between self and physician assistant begin to fade as we embrace our new calling. Um, one of my preceptors taught me to always end an appointment with the most important thing you want to, to say because patients usually remember the last thing you told them. So I'm gonna end this speech with what I'd like all of our friends, family, faculty, and staff to remember. No single actor, even a great actor like Arnold, can carry a movie to success on their own. And we would not be here before you graduating as PAs without the support and sacrifice of every person in this audience. You are powering the spotlight and you made it possible for us to succeed. On behalf of every member of Medics Class 50, thank you and hasta la vista. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Terry Dubravac, and welcome to the medics um, graduation ceremony. Wow, we really made it, didn't we? I don't know about all of you, but it seems sort of surreal at this point. To think it's been just over two years since the 52 of us started this long, strange journey to becoming the people you see here today. And today, we celebrate the end of that journey and the beginning of a new one. But first things first, and I'm sure on behalf of all of my classmates, I want to start by saying thanks. Thanks to the medics faculty for shepherding us through this long, confusing, strange process, and for guiding us and reassuring us that we'd graduate when sometimes we felt like we really wouldn't. Thanks to the dedicated and wonderful healthcare providers that have served as our preceptors throughout clinical year some of who may be here in the audience today. You have cultivated a new generation of healthcare providers and have done so out of the goodness of your heart. It's safe to say that all of us are forever changed by the experiences that you shared with us and we carry a piece of you in all of our future patient interactions throughout the rest of our careers. Thanks to our patients as well, who we've had the great honor to care for throughout this process. You are also our teachers, and our learning could not have happened without the trust that you placed in us. And thanks to all the parents, grandparents, aunts and uncles, um, family, friends, distant relatives, friends of friends, and everybody who has opened their homes to us during this past year of constant travel. Know that without you, we likely would have stayed at the cheapest motel on the most dangerous street in town <laughs> because PA school is expensive. So you may have literally saved somebody's life. <laughs> Which reminds me, at the start of this program, they told us in very stern tones, you will travel. <laughs> and that seemed like a perfectly fun idea, right? Who wouldn't want to travel? But what they might have said was, I hope you have a big suitcase because you're going to be living out of it for 11 months. <laughs> I don't know about you all, but I'm excited to have furniture again. It's a little things. And finally, thanks to all of you here for joining us in this celebration as we begin the next chapter in our lives and the beginning of bright new careers in medicine and bright new careers I know they're going to be. Because I've had the chance to sit next to all of these amazingly talented people and hear their stories of their journeys to PA school as nurses, paramedics, scribes, nursing assistants, researchers, laboratorians, 
and I'm sure there's plenty more. And it has made me realize that despite any differences that exist between us, there is a common thread of compassion, joy, and humility that brings us to this place together. Truly, I couldn't ask for a better group of people to learn alongside for these past two years. And I'm so excited to see what all of you guys do next. Yet I know from my own feelings and from talking with some of you, that this transition from being a student to being responsible for another person's life is a terrifying prospect. Imposter syndrome is very real, and you will feel at times that you aren't ready for this, that you don't deserve this, or that you just don't know how you got into this mess. <laughs> but don't believe it. You deserve this, you're ready for this, and you're ready to change the world. And I know it's cliche to say and what graduation speech should be complete without a cliche, but I truly believe that if your dreams don't scare you a little bit, then they're not big enough. And you would not have made it this far if you couldn't handle it. So trust yourself, trust in your learning, and know that if all else fails and you think you might have accidentally killed your patient because of something you prescribed them, you all have Paul's number. <laughs> our class pharmacist. Sorry, Paul, I couldn't resist. <laughs> in all seriousness, though, we're going to be fine. And we are so lucky to be in the profession that we're in. Paul Bloom, a Yale psychologist who's written a lot about um, the psychology of happiness, talked about what the research says about how to live a happy life. And it turns out that a lot of the things that we think will make us happy, like winning the lottery or getting that promotion or getting that new car, really only provide us with temporary happiness. Instead, he notes, we are constituted so that simple acts of kindness, like uh, giving to charity or expressing gratitude, have a positive impact on our long-term mood. The key to the happy life, it seems, is a life with sustained relationships challenging work, and connections to the community. And speaking for myself again, I cannot imagine a profession that better encapsulates these ideas. We are now leaders in our communities, and few professions afford the opportunity to have such a meaningful impact on the lives of other people. People spend the most time with healthcare providers near the beginning of their lives and near the end. And the memories that we provide of kindness in those moments will stay with us for the rest of our lives. Be in awe of that fact every day and let it inspire you during those long days in the clinic or in the OR. And if you're ever feeling out, burned out by difficult patients or long days or time away from your loved ones, I hope you'll take a moment to remember the difference you've made in the lives of your patients. Our society asks a lot from healthcare providers, but much is given in return. And remember that you have a family of 51 other people going through the exact same thing that you can reach out to. And whether you stay in Seattle or not, we are forever connected by the experiences we've shared. So Seattle Class 50, thank you for those experiences and congratulations. Good morning all, my name is Mark Hawkins. It's my pleasure this morning to recognize military service among RPA graduates. But before I get started on that, please indulge me for a minute to uh, give a brief historical perspective that's pertinent to today's graduation. In the mid-1960s, physician shortage and uneven distribution of primary care uh, doctors created a strain on the nation's healthcare system. At the same time, and despite extensive medical training, and experience among military medics and corpsmen, there were no corresponding civilian healthcare professions where these skilled veterans could make full use of their experience. A remarkable visionary, Dr. Eugene Stead, who was then chairman of the Department of Medicine at Duke University, believed that a new breed of mid-level practitioners could increase consumer access to healthcare services. Thus, he enrolled 
the first class of former military medics and corpsmen into a new program to train physician extenders. In doing so, Dr. Stead developed this new curriculum based partly on the fast-track physician training implemented by the military in World War II. Subsequently, the very first physician assistants graduated in 1967. In the late 1960s, Dr. Richard Smith also saw this need, particularly throughout the rural communities of the Pacific Northwest. In 1969, Dr. Smith enrolled the first class of former military medics and corpsmen into the new medics program at the University of Washington in Seattle. Since those early years, medics has proudly led the way with one of the highest percentage of veteran students in civilian PA education. Thus, you can see where military veterans have provided a rich tradition and contribution to the PA profession. So it's with great honor today that I recognize military service among our current graduates, faculty, staff, and those in the audience. Would the military veterans among Seattle Class 50 please stand to be recognized for your service to country? Lastly, I would ask that all U.S. veterans among our faculty, our staff, and our esteemed guests please stand and be recognized for your service as well. Good morning. My name is Tim Evans, and I give a lot of lectures. <laughs> <clears throat> we are, uh, let me first extend my personal sincere congratulations to everybody in uh, Seattle Class 50. Um, these uh, four days, there are four of them because we have four different sites <clears throat> uh, where we graduate students, are the, by far the best days in the year for me. Uh, so this is a great celebration for, for all of us, but that includes us. And we are so happy and proud of you, happy for you and proud of you. <clears throat> we are fortunate uh, at MedEx that we have terrific students. And if you take students like these and you put them somewhere in the general vicinity of knowledge, they will soak it up and learn it. But we and they are also fortunate that we have some terrific uh, teachers. Um, who give up their time and their energy and their, and their experience and expertise uh, to share that with our students uh, in, in helping them along the way. And each year the graduating classes have an opportunity to uh, select from among their many excellent uh, instructors three people to receive the Medic's Golden Apple Award. And it's my privilege to get a chance to introduce them. These are all busy clinicians and I know that at least a couple of them are here but they may not all be here. Um, but we'll start with uh, Dr. Karen Avery, who is a pediatrician at Seattle Children's Hospital. Uh, she lectures on emergency medicine, and particularly on pediatric emergencies. Uh, a few comments from students. This is a physician who understands the role of PAs and educates with an encouraging approach. She was humble in her knowledge and disposition and allowed for mistakes to be spoken uh, for clarification in a safe environment. I enjoyed her energy, use of video, and the use of case uh, studies to apply uh, our knowledge. I appreciate the speaker's enthusiasm and extent of knowledge. Dr. Avery was very interactive and presented smoothly. And just a couple of other selected um, comments. Great lecture. Thanks so much. It really helped when Dr. Avery went through the basics and didn't just assume we were all on the same page. Dr. Avery was fantastic. Her PowerPoint was wonderful with just the right amount of information with practical clinical tidbits like placing a catheter or, or completing a pediatric lumbar puncture. 
Dr. Avery did an excellent job of presenting a clear picture of the various pediatric emergencies and included useful clinical pearls on how to manage these emergencies. Dr. Avery gave a great lecture <clears throat> covering pediatric emergencies. Um, she was humble in her knowledge and disposition and allowed for mistakes to be spoken for clarification in a safe environment. I enjoyed her energy, use of video, and case studies to apply uh, to, uh, to our knowledge. Um, it was also noted that her first lecture um, was to this class, and I understand it was the very last lecture of the year. That's a pretty tough lecture to give. Um, everybody's tired, everybody wants to get the heck out of here, um, but despite that, she rose to the top. Um, so I believe Dr. Avery is here, uh, and if so, please come down and let us all congratulate Dr. Avery. Hi. Um, I want to say how thankful and honored I am that you have bestowed this award on me. It's really, I was not expecting that, and it really means a lot to me to, um, to receive it. So thank you. And I want to also say congratulations. I know you've worked really hard for this, and I know you guys are going to be great. And since you gave me the microphone, <laughs> and I like to talk, um, I want to just say a few words from my heart to give you some um, advice going forward. The first one, and as somebody said, you know, you always say the last thing because patients don't remember that much. We can only remember three things really ever, so I'm just going to tell you three. First is stay humble. Um, so I was really touched that one of the comments had to do with the way that I was humble because I think that's a, a really important guiding principle in my practice and my life. You don't know everything, and you never will. <laughs> so the important thing to know is know what you know, and know what you don't know, and seek out expertise, and never be afraid to ask. Um, and in that, in that vein, the second thing is stay curious. The way you know more than what you know now is to look, is to ask, and is to read. I was just, had a little time in urgent care the other day, and do you know what I was reading about? Strep throat. <laughs> I've been a pediatrician now for 10 years, and it turns out I don't know all there is to know about strep throat. So it's okay to go back to the basics. It's good to look things up. It's good to get and say, wow, what are those guidelines on strep throat? I got a minute. Let's read about them. It's going to make me better in the future, and it's going to help me create guidelines that's gonna, that are going to help other people. And the third thing, and I think honestly the most important, is stay kind. Kind to your patients, kind to your colleagues, and most importantly, and most difficultly, kind to yourself. You're going to make mistakes. There are going to be days when you're not your best self. And the most important thing you can do is to forgive yourself, give yourself some grace, move on, and be better the next day. So congratulations. You're going to be great. Our second recipient of the Golden Apple Award this year is Dr. Jason Kilmer, uh, who is a PhD in clinical psychology. He has lectured on behavioral medicine uh, and motivational interviewing. Comments from the students. This was great. Entertaining speaker. Educational presentation for a topic that isn't strictly medical. I think it's important to have communication skills based on objective evidence. Very useful for future practice. <coughs> He had a way of being inspirational, funny, and knowledgeable all at the same time. He made me want to listen to him for the entire presentation. Really great information here. I am actively trying to make changes in my communication style and will be working to incorporate many of these strategies. The speaker was very engaging and elicited participation very effectively. One of the finest classes I've attended anywhere. If Dr. Kilmer is in the audience, please join us. Again, these are, these are busy people. Not everybody can take time out of, their, out of their day, but rest assured, we will get his golden apple to him. <clears throat> the third uh, recipient uh, is one of our graduates and one of the people of whom we are very proud, as we are of you. Uh, the next recipient is Leah Yoke. 
um, who lectures on adult, in, in adult medicine on infectious diseases, doing introductions to infectious disease, uh, HIV and miscellaneous infectious diseases, and GI infections. Leah, your lectures are fantastic, interesting, informative, and pertinent. It is obvious that you have put time into your presentations, and I appreciate it. Leah is a great lecturer with tons of knowledge, and she keeps the class engaged. I love Leah. <laughs> Her humor is refreshing. Her lectures and cases are very helpful, and she makes the topic so much easier to understand than our book does. <laughs> Outstanding job with what could have been a very difficult topic. Thank you for pointing out key differences and pulling things together with the case studies at the end. Please have her for any and all lectures she can present. Wonderful lecturer. Please join me in congratulating Leah Yoke. <clears throat> so much. It's really fun to be able to lecture about a topic that I care about, which is infections in our patients. And um, I hope that um, as you all move forward in your career, that you get the opportunity to find something that you're passionate about and be able to share it with future PAs. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing what you all do. The PA profession is exciting, and uh, I hope that you find it as much fun and uh, inspirational as I have. So. Thank you and all the best. Hello. I'm Kira Vader. I'm the Associate Program Director of Academic Affairs here at MedEx. Um, and we are going to start uh, with our faculty awards. So these awards are. Um, I would say voted, but we don't really vote. We sort of argue um, <laughs> as a group in a friendly way about these awards. These are really fun for us to give out. And as Terry mentioned earlier, these are surprises for our students. Um, so I'm going to start that off with the uh, John B. Coombs Leadership of Award. And before I do that, I just want to say it's been such an honor working with you guys. I got to address you on your first day of class. And so it's really great to get to address you briefly on your last day of class as well. And don't tell anyone, but you guys are my favorite, so. <laughs> so I'm sad to see you go. Um, let me tell you a little bit about Dr. Coombs and who he was. He was the Associate Dean for, of Regional Affairs for rural and Rural Health in the School of Medicine. He had a long record of promoting the PA profession. He was a national leader in improving health care for underserved and rural populations through his work with the University of Washington's Rural Health Program. This award is presented to students who have become role models to their peers, have assumed some of the responsibilities of leadership during their training, and have carried out those responsibilities with integrity, cooperation, and understanding. As I mentioned, we sit down as a faculty every year to decide these, award, uh, these awards. Usually, this creates a great debate, as you can imagine. But this year was different. While there were many members of this class who displayed leadership qualities, there was one student who stood out as a clear leader. While he did not hold any formal leadership position, his informal leadership was recognized both by his peers and the faculty. Even from the admissions process, it was clear that he was a leader. One of his letters of recommendation described him as the team member that others lean on in difficult times for logistical, physical, and emotional support. In the classroom, his positive attitude and enthusiasm for learning was infectious and inspired his classmates to push through the tough times with a smile most of the time. I had the pleasure of having the student do a rotation with me on the inpatient service at UWMC. It was there that I saw that beneath this sunny disposition was a real tenacity, a thirst for learning, and a tireless work ethic. He quickly established rapport with some of our most difficult patients, and the medical residents described him as a ray of sunshine amidst the storm of the inpatient service. <laughs> It is without a doubt that this student will go on to become a leader in our profession, and I am honored to call him a colleague. This year's John Coombs Leadership Award goes to Doug Stroop.
Holy cow. Um, I don't even know what to say. This was a huge surprise. I was looking at Maddie the whole time. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I just don't even know what to say. I feel like I, uh, this was not my first application trying to get into medics. And as uh, Terry Scott had said, um, <laughs> you have to bring your A game. You have to keep working. You have to keep trying to get in. And I feel lucky because the classmates that I have in this class, I feel like this is the class I was supposed to be in. And I couldn't feel uh, happier, luckier, or um, more privileged to, to have a better class. So thank you, class 50. And I look forward to working with you guys in the future. Thanks. <laughs> Good morning, all. I brought notes because I want to keep this kind of short. Um, it's wonderful to see you all. I don't know this class well because I was up in Alaska when you all were sitting here for the last two years. Um, I have the honor today of presenting the Richard Layton Commitment to Underserved Populations Award. But first, I would like to read a portion of the medic's mission that was in your um, piece of paper. <laughs> Medics, <laughs> Medics Northwest, the University of Washington School of Medicine's Physician Assistant Program, is committed to educating experienced healthcare personnel from diverse backgrounds to practice medicine with physician supervision. The program provides a broad competency-based curriculum that focuses on primary care with the emphasis on underserved populations. With this as our mission, we have endeavored to honor those students who have shown extraordinary continued commitment to the underserved populations. We have named the award after one of our early preceptors, a man and a friend who has become a role model and my friend, yes. Describing Dick as a challenge, if you had the chance to ever meet him, you would have seen the twinkle in his eye, his ever-present smile, and his elfin beard. And during your conversation with him, he would make you feel that you were the most important person in the conversation. Let me describe to you an early encounter uh, with this preceptor. And the reason I wrote these things down is I could get off on many stories, but we're going to keep this one. One evening, as darkness fell across the small hamlet of Grandview, Washington, a lonely figure in black leather jacket and chaps rolled his motorcycle to a stop in the back drive of a small farmhouse. The figure ambled up to the drive to the porch and strikes loudly three times on the small door. A woman in the house startles and calls her husband, Dick, answer the door. Someone just got off his motorcycle and I don't like his looks. <laughs> Dick answered the door and the figure says in a very eager chipper voice, hi, I'm Charles Hall, uh, your new medic student here for my preceptorship. And uh, Charlie was one of my classmates, wonderful guy. Thus started Richard Layton's 33-year uh, relationship with medics. Dick Layton started the, as a preceptor in 1972 while working in the Yakima Valley Clinic in Grandview, Washington. A number of years later, he moved to Seattle to become the first director of the Family Practice Residency at Providence Hospital, serving many years in the city's low-income and underserved populations. As one of the graduating Family Practice Residents recalled, Understanding medical care in the context of family, Dick came by the family practice residency's room at 4.55 every single Friday to tell us to go home. He graduated, Dick graduated from the fifth medical school class here at the University of Washington in 1954. He served our community providing exemplary leadership. Dick worked with medics as a member of the medics advisory board. It is a privilege for me to present this award uh, to a very disturbing, uh, not disturbing, deserving. <laughs> huh. Maybe I don't know him that well, so maybe he is. Um, honoring our friend, Dr. Richard Smith. Maddox attempts to select students for this honor who have committed to underserved populations and primary care. And it is difficult for the faculty to identify one single member of your class uh, for this honor. However, we must. The recipient of this year's Richard Layton Commitment to Underserved Populations Award is well, uh, well written and well spoken. In his application to medics, it was noted, I was born and raised in an industrial town in Louisiana, 
just south of New Orleans, where not many people leave town, go to college, or work outside the oil industry. I appreciated that my upbringing helped me understand the types of choices hard-working, low- and middle-class people in this country have to make. I also lear earned a culinary degree and worked as a chef. I have finished my English degree and exploring the narratives and life stories was uh, narratives with great empathy. Um, I wish to devote myself to making an impact in the lives of those who have fallen between the cracks of society, been brushed aside or outright ignored. I would like to do my best to make the cracks a little smaller. This year's recipient was the external affairs officer coordinating uh, and made participating in interprofessional community outreach. He was a member of the construction crew for Habitat for Humanity. Finally, in reviewing this year's recipient's files, his major asset to help steer the healthcare team to provide excellent care to populations. This guy also has, and I've never seen this in my 35 years of teaching, a 50-ton captain's license for sale and endorsement. So he drives these 50-ton ships, or can. As many years of preparation, the long two years of PA school has ended. Um, with that, we would like Chris Petrie, Petrie to come forward and receive the different Thank you very much. I look forward to getting back to sailing now, <laughs> if I remember how. Um, standing in front of here, I, in front of everyone, I can think of really only one thing, and that's I am incredibly honored that we all got through this together, that we did it together, and that's why we are together today. Um, it means a lot. It means a lot to me, and I'm sure it does to you, so thank you. And thank all of you. Good morning, I'm Karen Wick. I'm the MedEx Director of Research and Graduate Programs, and it is my privilege to announce the Writing Award. This award is given to a student at each campus who demonstrates creativity and skill with the written assignments across the two years of the program. Um, this student, we have a, the very first written assignment is summer quarter is a two-part. Students turn something in that's a draft and faculty provide feedback with no grade and that gives the student the opportunity to fix things and turn it in for a grade. And uh, I remember reading this paper on the first draft and thinking, I got nothing for you. Put in a couple of commas and turn it in. Um, and that was the kind of skill that this student displayed throughout the two years. And he also used his papers to demonstrate uh, sensitivity to special populations, particularly those who are not well served by our system. I am happy to announce that the writing award goes to Matt McGee. How long do I have? <laughs> um, I don't really know if writing well correlates with being a good clinician, but I hope so. Um, <laughs> uh, no, I, I just have really enjoyed getting to spend a lot of time with you guys. I think there's some special about Class 50, and we all, we all really know that. Um, I love you guys. Uh, 
I also get to announce um, awards for the Master's Capstone Project. These people presented their projects yesterday, and they've been working on them for a year, um, but the presentations were yesterday, and the faculty evaluate those and would like to recognize a couple of people who were outstanding in their presentations. And we didn't know the results of this evaluation until last night. Um, there are a few categories that we give awards in and we can't announce all of them from the stage, so there are some additional Capstone Award certificates tucked into some certificate folders that you'll get at the end of the morning here. Um, but we will announce a couple. And the students can present either as a poster session or an oral presentation to an audience. And the faculty thought that the best oral presentation yesterday was delivered on the topic of primary care delivery of medication-assisted treatment for opioid use disorder and what PAs need to know, delivered by Chris Petrie. And in addition to the various categories that the faculty evaluated, they also selected someone who they thought was the best overall Capstone Project presenter yesterday. You're going to have to come up again, Matt McGady. My name is Lois Thetford and I am part of the Seattle faculty and it is my honor to present the Spirit of Medics Award. The Spirit of Medics Award is for students who have dedicated themselves to being a PA, have shown compassion to, to others and maintained a sense of humor and perseverance working through adversity. While this description could apply to many of our graduating students today. Um, some of them have really shown outstandingly in this regard. So this student wrote on her CASPA entry admission essay, my goal is to provide primary care to homeless populations to help them get psychiatric care I can use my personal experiences with poverty to ensure that patients get proper resources. She worked as an EMT, a volunteer firefighter. She volunteered at the aquarium to educate the public. Her preceptors said she reads extensively on problems that we see in clinic. She gladly accepts any assignments that I give her for after clinic homework and takes initiative to communicate with patients about therapies. She was recognized from elementary school as a bright light. And one of her teachers is here. <laughs> her reference from the Tacoma Community Council EMT training said, I know I knew when I met her that she would be one of our shining stars. She will become one of your shining stars also. Tanisha McBeth. <laughs> So much you guys and as Lois has mentioned I did have an amazing support system this entire time so thank you Mrs. Benavides, my PE school teacher and Mrs. TG. 
my elementary school counselor and then anyone who's ever been there for me like Lisa and Sandy and then most importantly thank you so much to class 50. We have fought and we have worked so hard for this and we have all earned this so thank you and thank you faculty <laughs> and thank you to my best friend. <laughs> Good morning. My name is Anju Jan. I'm a medics didactic faculty member here in Seattle. I am also a proud alumni of this program and over 10 years ago I was sitting right in your seats. I just want to take a small opportunity to say congratulations class of 50. It's a great club that you're joining and your friends are waiting for you in the back. I have the honor of presenting the Mary Reed Award. Mary Reed graduated from medics in 1983. Her husband, Joe Reed, established this award to honor Mary's commitment to excellence. This award is presented to the medics graduate who has achieved the highest GPA amongst all didactic students amongst all four sites. In the application essay to this, this graduate wrote, often underserved populations are not comfortable around clinicians, and it is my responsibility to change this. This graduate organized health fairs at alliances for refugee women, collaborating with nursing and pharmacy students. Clinical preceptors provided feedback such as, a great PA student, very knowledgeable, eager to learn, dependable, and professional. His pharmacy background is a great strength. <laughs> it is my honor and privilege to present this award to Paul Hughes. I didn't prepare any words today. Um, and my parents, you know, they have no idea that people clap for me or whatnot. So I don't really know how to explain this to them either. Um, I'll just say thanks to everybody and we'll, we'll keep it simple. Good morning, my name is DJ Smith. I'm also a Seattle Didactic faculty member who's had the pleasure over the last couple of years to uh, watch an absolutely amazing group of crushers um, just doing amazing things and we're really excited to uh, watch these guys go forward and um, watch where their careers take them. We're really proud of them. Um, today I have the honor of recognizing uh, two recipients for the Stephen Turnipseed Veterans Award. Uh, which is awarded to a medics graduate for service to country, to class, and to community. Um, as Mark alluded to earlier um, when we were talking about veterans, this program has a long history um, and a very proud history of being an institution that supports military uh, veterans as they redirect their training and skills forged in military service, leveraging their um, spirit of selfless service and resilience and their intrinsic abilities to lead high-functioning teams to become physicians uh, physician assistants serving their communities and leading meaningful changes in healthcare. And so a little bit about Steve Turnipseed um, I think is really important to really understand this award. So Steve Turnipseed is really one of the power pioneers of our profession. He was one of 14 military service members that were in medics class one. Um, he is a Vietnam veteran who served as a special forces medic um, in Southeast Asia as a part of first special forces group. He also was the first African-American graduate from this program, um, and he was the first physician assistant at what was known as Group Health Cooperative um, as well, where he served in family practice. He had a distinguished career there as a clinician and a hospital administrator. He went on to uh, be one of the plank holder board members for the AAPA. He was one of the founders of the Washington Associate for Physician Assistants and uh, was instrumental in setting up several PA programs throughout the country. I think by my count, it was seven different programs that he's had a hand in um, establishing. So um, he is really a giant in the profession on whose shoulders we stand upon. And I uh, get to award two of our graduates um, to 
um, have this one. And the first recipient, um, like Steve, also served as a Special Forces Medical Sergeant for First Special Forces Group. He was the distinguished honor graduate of his Special Forces Medic class in 2010, and he served with distinction both in combat and in humanitarian relief operations um, in Southeast Asia. His teammates uh, say his reputation as a medic is unparalleled, and he is always sought out for his competence, leadership, and skills. Ryan Krager's medics teammates sitting before you would attest to this. Uh, Ryan exemplifies a Special Forces soldier, a quiet professional, exceptionally capable, yet remains a humble servant to his colleagues, to his patients, to his community, and to his nation. He is a model warrior healer. He's tenacious, he's resilient, and he's compassionate. And he is the first person to receive the Stern Steve Turnipseed Award. That goes to Ryan Krager. As you might have noticed, Ryan's not here. And that's really a testament to um, exactly the type of service and sacrifice that we're speaking to. Uh, Ryan is currently deployed as a Special Forces Medic with his detachment abroad, sacrificing his opportunity to celebrate his achievements with his PA colleagues today. Um, however, we will ensure that he gets his award upon his redeployment um, in just a few months. So um, that's Ryan Krieger. Uh, the second recipient today is also a Special Operations Medic. He served in combat in both uh, in Afghanistan as a Special Operations Indi Independent Duty Corpsman uh, with the U.S. Navy 1st Raider Battalion and 1st Reconnaissance Battalion. Uh, his Marines would say, he's one of the hardest working corpsmen I have ever met. Uh, he has the ability to perform under pressure, a selfless attitude, a knack for staying positive in dire situations, loyal to all around him. He continually puts others first. We looked at guys like him to come to the rescue, and he did that time and time again. Another one of his teammates said, during a firefight, he risked his life to leave cover under heavy enemy fire to drag a Marine wounded with a severed brachial artery from a rooftop. Um, he was able to stabilize that Marine, get him evacuated where he recovered. We have seen that work ethic, that professionalism, that selflessness consistently throughout his training. Uh, he maintains an intense focus on his training, his roles, his tasks, and is simply an absolutely solid physician assistant. And we look forward to seeing him thrive from afar as he begins his career in orthopedic surgery in San Diego. The second recipient of the Stephen Turnipseed Award is presented to Brendan Finn. Wow, I did not expect this. This is a complete surprise, but um, I want to thank Class 50 uh, for, all, for all of you. I consider you um, personal friends. Um, I thought it was going to be difficult transitioning from the military when I got out in 2015. I went right into like the civilian world and academia in general, but you guys made that easy for me. Um, I consider you all friends, and I hope you can um, I'll keep in touch in the future. And like I said in my each one teach one, this is for the guys that didn't come home, that didn't have the chance like I did to go to school, use the GI Bill, and uh, become a professional. And guys that are, I know that are still downrange um, engaged in, in combat. So thank you very much, faculty and my class, and of course my beautiful, lovely wife and my new baby girl, Layla. <laughs> So as you can see, we've got some wonderful uh, graduates. Um, we're gonna now move to the part of the ceremony we've all been waiting for, and that's the presentation of the certificates. Before we do that, I wanna take a pause for just a moment and um, acknowledge the faculty that are here on stage, but also the staff of the MedEx program. Many of them are in attendance. Um, would you guys stand? I think the admissions office, the staff that helped support this program.
Thank you, guys. You know, we, we wouldn't be able to do what we do without the support of the, the wonderful staff. Um, in addition, you know, medics is a two-year program, and the first year is a didactic one, and it's easy to recognize folks in a brick-and-mortar building and in a classroom. But none of this would take place without our clinical preceptors. And clinical preceptors do this voluntarily. They don't get paid to help train you. And I, so I would like to recognize any individuals in the uh, audience who are clinical preceptors. If you have uh, precepted a PA student, whether this class or any time in the past, would you please stand and be recognized as well? Thank you all, thank you all. Again, it's a two-year program and that year of didactic, which the students often love, even though they do travel a lot, um, that it, it wouldn't take place without the volunteer clinical um, preceptors. So uh, we're gonna take a moment to uh, reconfigure the stage a little bit and the graduates, you guys know what you need to do at this point. We're gonna take a pause and get, the, get ready to, to uh, hand the certificates. What I'll also say is this is the opportunity for individuals to come down and get that photo of your graduate as you see uh, so moved, all right? So give us just a moment.
if everyone wants to settle in, we'll begin shortly. Hopefully. We'll be beginning in just a few seconds and start the ceremony for certificate handouts. Okay. It's my honor and pleasure to announce the graduates for Seattle Class of 50 receiving their Masters of Clinical Health Services. Katayu Nakbari is not able to attend today. Matthew Arbuckle. Warner Ash. Tangan. <laughs> Nicole Bazaar. <laughs> Beckman. <laughs> Roxana Benajad. Elizabeth Bowman. Chris Brantley. Jennifer Kassler. You go, girl. You deserve that. 
Andrea Sigliola. Gavin Cochran. <laughs> Kathleen Suzanne Dornan. Michael Anthony Doyle. <laughs> Terry Joseph Dubravac. Brendan Finn. Michael Cameron Freilich. Christian Daniel Garrido. Mary Louise Wheezy Greenwood. Ryan Grove. Paul Hughes.
Joshua David Koopman. Ryan Prager could not be with us today due to his military service. <laughs> Julianne Victoria Krauss. Chase Tyler Crumans. Irina Kiliuk. Aparna Lakshman. Melanie Maxfield. Robert Lee McCrory. Sarah McDougall. Tanisha Marie McFadden.
Matthew Robert McGady. Danielle Ray Malat. Jace Meng. <laughs> Chooks Pang. Olga Pavlova Rios. Christopher Paul Petrie. Beth Ann Raspin. Lena Redkina. April Riverland.
Rachel Elizabeth Robbins. Paul Schwartz. Kimberly Bell Sayer. Miles Cox Sibley. Jessica Ann Sisu. Andrea Charmaine Smith. Leroy Spurlock. Douglas Stroop. Joshua Paul Swidler. Diana Trin.
Rostislav Weinstein. Please join us in congratulating Seattle Class 50. Please join us on the stage for a class picture. Thank you. <laughs> oh, sorry, Terry so has some closing remarks. That's okay. That's okay. Uh, you guys can start. You, you, this concludes the uh, formal uh, ceremony. I would like to put one last challenge in front of the graduates, however. First of all, how sweet is it? It's kind of sweet at this Woo! moment, right? Don't forget this moment. Uh, but you got one last challenge. You've got that national certifying exam, so do us a favor, knock it out of the ballpark, will you? Yeah! All right. So, come on up, come on stage. Thank you guys, that concludes the ceremony.